My lids become lighter with the misty tinge of gray daylight, or gray light, as it's been named. The whistles unleash a howling reminder that I have arrived at my destination. My dream is over. It's time to wake up. I check my bag for the goods I'm here to deliver. Yep, it's all there. A modest assortment of vegetables that I have personally grown for six long weeks. This old world has molded me into a farmer, although I wasn't born one. Wise elders would often talk of the War of Shikari, a bloody clash of two groups of minds that resulted in the starvation and death of almost every soul of the land. Over the past years, this land has fallen into a state of anarchy, where rules are a thing of past pages, and barbaric survival is all that remains. The colossal ship throws its anchor into the black water, and I gather the produce I can only hope will thicken a few stomachs for a couple of days or so. I was brought here to deliver food to the survivors of this dangerous wasteland. It wasn't always this way. These nearly lifeless dunes were once radiant with the sound of children playing games and painters creating masterpieces. What was once an atmosphere filled with lush gardens and flowing rivers has been replaced with miles and miles of mundane sand. As I step out into this forgotten desert, I begin to walk north, as this is where survivors have been reported as they sent smoke signals created from the ashes of the fallen. Talk about dying to live. The bag on my shoulder is heavier than I thought. I look down, observe the contents, and let out a disappointed sigh. I know the survivors grow weary of radishes, but they are pretty much the only thing my poor soil can support. Dining variety hasn't been a luxury of these people for quite some time as I'm sure they aren't praying for another batch of radish stew. A lack of choices is all I have to show for my act of philanthropy. After an hour and a half of seemingly aimless trailing, I finally reach my first customer. He is a young boy, a teenager perhaps. He's nursing his right breast as I give him three of my largest radishes. The others don't know this. I try to give my greatest products to the young. The ripest youth deserve the ripest fruit, I always say, even though we haven't seen fruit in nearly 10 years. He thanks me for my gift, although I could tell he was expecting more. It's almost as if a dark halo hovers behind his head, representing the monsters that only a war can create. With my first delivery complete, I make my way towards an old abandoned neighborhood. I can remember a time not so long ago where the friendly neighbors of this division would drag their wooden chairs out to their trimmed lawn and converse over chilled ale. Whether it was a run-of-the-mill discussion about the oncoming or a past work week or simply a holiday gathering, the inhabitants of this particular community were like a family of perfect strangers. My next stop is usually relatively docile as I'm delivering to my old friend Darrow. Darrow has seen his share of death in his past years, as he served as a frontline infantry unit during the War of Shikari. Visions of his past bloodshed keep him on alert, even though it's a constant false alarm. Here he is today, holding his unloaded rifle, as he does every day. Darrow is an immigrant, meaning that he migrated here from a different land in order to make a better life for himself. We shake hands, I give him the radishes that he has earned, we exchange a few heartfelt words, and my trek continues. My last stop involves me coming in contact with someone I've never been crazy about. An old grenadier soldier named Birch. Birch is always looking for a fight that no one has instigated, and is never seen without his mysterious pet, Perch. Perch gets its name from the fact that it is never seen anywhere else except Birch's shoulder. Hence, you have Birch and Perch, Perch and Birch. Try saying that five times fast. I bow my head to this respected veteran and gently hand him the rest of my radishes. Birch is displeased, and I am unsurprised. Bah! Radishes again! When will you ever bring me a steak, boy? And how about a rack of lamb? I am sorry, my friend. 
but this is all I have, I reply. Eh, who needs you? Just give me the poison plants. That went a lot better than I had originally expected, as I was surprised to see that Birch was eventually ratified, or approving, of my humble offering. Another day has come to an end, and although I might not have made anyone's day livelier than it may have previously been, I can still hold my head high knowing that although I may not be doing anything grandiose, I am at least doing something. I feel fortunate that this land is undergoing an armistice, or a temporary truce, and I am thus allowed to travel these sands safely. Now begins my long walk back to the dock so I may board the ship. I feel in my pockets for some spare seeds as they see them as the future of my next visit. Before leaving, I dig a small hole and plant the mentioned seeds in hopes that one day this entire land will grow again.